In this session, we're going to model a sculptural wall in Rhino and render it with Thea for Rhino. So let's start a new session of Rhino. And we're going to draw the profile of the wall um, using interpolate curve. The command is interp curve. I'm going to start drawing in the right view and I have grid snap turned on. So I'll draw this curve as a straight line going up the um, z-axis with ortho and object snap turned on. I'll go up a couple grid intervals uh, each time and keep this regular. I want to have multiple control points on this curve. I'm going to um, move it to one end of my grid and create an array. Uh, use array, an array to make a line of these. So array, number in the x direction 1, number in the y direction 11, z direction 1, and the y spacing I'll make that 10, a grid interval each time. And there is my linear array of curves. Now, I'm going to select all of these curves. I'm going to turn on record history, and I'm going to create a loft. The loft will be linked to these um, curves in its history. So loft, I'll make a normal loft. And as I change these curves, it's going to change the lofted surface. I'll set perspective to ghosted. So I can start to see the result. So as I select control points on this, it's going to change the shape of the loft. What I want to do is select all the curves, deselect the surface with control click, and turn on control points. So points on. This gives me control points for all the curves. I'm now going to turn on a selection filter. Selection filter. I'm going to deselect curves and surfaces so I can easily select my control points. I leave the selection filter window open here so the selection filter stays on. I'm going to select control points on the first curve and start to sculpt this. I'm going to make a, a wavy form that varies in amplitude, uh, generally um, stronger at this end and weaker at the other end. So I select the control points and I start to sculpt this. starting to deform my surface. using the control points. As I get to the second half of this, I'm going to start decreasing um, the amplitude of these changes.
until we get to a flat surface. So if I, once I like the shape of my um, wall, I am ready to render my scene. Um, I'm going to, first of all, create a solid from this wall. I'll turn off the selection filter now. And I'm going to move my loft onto the loft, onto a layer called loft. And I can hide the curves now. I'm going to make the active layer um, another layer called surfaces by double clicking it. And oh, I need a layer called contours. Contours. I make contours the active layer. So I'm going to contour this on perpendicular to the y axis. Um, and split it up into a series of verticals. So I'll use the contour command, and I will draw the um, vector perpendicular to the contour plane. So I'll draw that on the y-axis. Um, the space between the contours, I'll set that to 3, and now it cuts this into a series of contour cuts. These have gone to the contour layer. I'll make surface as my active layer, and I'm going to hide the loft. Now, what I'll do is extrude um, the curves, the contour curves, on the y-axis. So I'll use the command extrude curve, extrude CRV. And it's, make sure this is on the y-axis, and I'm going to make the extrusion distance 2. Now, I can hide the contour layer, and I'm going to make solids my active layer. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to extrude them. So extrude surf for extrude surfaces, and I need to set the direction. So I click on the direction option, and I'm going to draw on the x-axis, and I'm going to set the distance to 2. And that builds my post. And I can turn off the surface layer. Now, I may want to um, scale this. These are looking too thick. I will um, scale um, 1D. I'll put in the origin, and I'll scale this, let's say, um, I'll set my vector, and I'm going to scale these by, um, by half on the x-axis. Scale direction, x-axis. And I'll do this again on the y-axis. 0.5, I'll set the y-axis. Let's change the render mode to Arctic. And um, for Thea, we're going to add some materials. Before I do that, I'm going to set my basic render settings. So I'll go to the Thea Render tab. And I'm going to set to the Environment tab the sidebar, 
I'm going to turn on soft shadow for the sun. I'm going to enable uniform lighting. And then I'm going to run the sun command. I'm going to turn the sun on. I'll set the location to here. And I'm going to set this viewport to rendered mode so I can see the the sun, the shadows cast on this. I'm going to set the time of year and time of day to get interesting shadows. something like that. And now I'll add a material to my solids layer. So I'm going to go to the Thea content browser. This time I'm going to go to an online repository. I'm going to pick from the wood panel. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to pick this charred wood, burning wood. Make sure you hit add to download it, and then I can add it to this solid layer. For the perspective view, I can, in the Thea toolbar, I can hit start rendering and start to get a preview of it. For the mapping of these objects, I'll go to Properties, Texture Mapping, and I'm going to change this to Box. And start the rendering again. It's looking all right. Now I need to add a figure to this. Or scale. So I'm going to import a Thea model, pick a AXYZ Metropoly scanned character, import the proxy. I'll pick reduced mesh at 25% rather than just a bounding box so I can see um, where my character is facing. Place it, escape to stop placing, and then um, we can see the orientation of our character. I'll place it relative to the scene where I want it. Double click on perspective to make this view full. I'll frame my scene how I want it. And before I do a rendering, I'm going to go to the back to the Thea tab to the camera tab. I'm going to sync to the Rhino viewport for when I use darkroom. And we're going to adjust depth of field here in a second. So run the rendering again. Everything is sharp right now. So if I want to make the things further away have become blurred, what I can do is adjust the distance. So I'm going to turn off autofocus. And I'm going to set the focal distance to maybe uh, 10. And I'm going to set the type here to sharpness. And in the distance, things are getting blurred, and my foreground still in focus. So
we've done a preview rendering and it looks okay. So I may need to adjust that focal distance, make it a little further. So I'll make it um, try 15. Set the sharpness perhaps to 30. To do a full rendering of this scene, um, a presentation quality rendering, I'm going to stop and I'm going to open the a dark room. We're going to use the Presto renderer. I'm going to change it from interactive mode to uh, presentation render mode. In the settings, I'm going to change tone mapping to filmic. I'm going to go to the channels and I'm going to enable alpha and denoise. With denoise enabled, this will um, use the denoiser to make a better rendering. Now I can hit start render and after it computes the initial rendering, I'll get a preview. There we go. And now our rendering started. It'll tell us down here when it's completed, and then I can save the file out as a JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and pause the rendering and save as a PNG or a JPEG.